so much for stopping by with Love Mom on today. So now what are we gonna do today? Today we are having one of my favorite meals. Nice and simple, old school, but it's good. Meatloaf. <laughs> but we're gonna have meatloaf with a twist. We're gonna do ground turkey and ground chicken and put them together. And guess what? It's high in protein, very, very low in fat, very good for you. I'm even gonna show you the trick to keeping your meatloaf from being soggy and mushy okay so we're gonna have some meatloaf yes I know that I I was a vegetarian for quite some time and I even tried vegan but I couldn't do that because they can't have cheese <laughs> but uh, I am going back to being a vegetarian but before I go back I wanted to make sure I had me a good plate of meatloaf <laughs> so let's see what's happening in the kitchen a combination of ground turkey and ground chicken one lovely egg an onion purple is my preference but you can use whichever ones you like a couple of bell peppers and I'm using the red and the orange some tomatoes some panko breadcrumbs and some minced garlic and then some seasonings of your choice so let's get cooking Okay guys, to start this recipe off, I know it's kind of weird, but most people use meat, um, excuse me, ketchup in their meatloaf, not I. I like to make my own sauce for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by steaming some tomatoes. Now as you can see, the steam is coming up out of this already because I put the burner on and got it to boiling. So now I'm going to cut it down to medium high so it can steam nice. My normal little steamer that goes down in the pot, I cannot find, so we're improvising. This is a steamer colander from another pot. I'm sitting on top of some boiling water so that it can create the steam. And then we are going to, sorry about that, we're going to put in our tomatoes. And this is roughly about seven or eight Roma tomatoes, just cut up. In the squares doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to mash them up anyway. I just cut them up so that it'll make it a little easier to mash. Then I'm going to put in to this the tomatoes a little a little small handful of arugula, believe it or not, <laughs> and a small handful of parsley just to give it some flavor while it's steaming. Then I'm going to sprinkle about a teaspoon of minced garlic on top. You just want it all to steam together so the flavors can combine and marry and all that good stuff. And then we are going to take a pinch of sea salt and a pinch of pepper and we're going to put the top on. Okay. No garlic powder or onion powder or anything at this point. Just the basics. Okay. Then we're going to put the top on this and let it steam for roughly about 10 minutes. Let it get really, really soft and then we're going to come back. Okay, so now while we're waiting for our tomatoes to get nice and soft, we're going to start off with our meat. And what we have here is a pound of ground turkey and a pound of ground chicken. We're going to mix them together. Uh, very low in fat, which makes it very, very good for you, but it's high in protein. Make sure you get the leanest that you could possibly get. And what do we always say? Clean hands is the best tool. So you got to get your hands dirty for this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is in this meat, we're going to add about a teaspoon of minced garlic. It smells really good. Love the way garlic smells. However, <laughs> doesn't make your breath so nice. <laughs> and then we're going to use a teaspoon of smoked sea salt okay. and then we're going to use a couple of dashes of coriander and we'll put all of this in the description lock, uh, box below so that you can remember what you're doing I'm going to use a couple of shakes of truffle dust and you're probably saying what is truffle dust basically it's powdered mushroom <laughs> And you can find it at the grocery store. I find this one at uh, Kroger's. For, and Kroger's, for some of you, will be fries. Okay, so we're going to use a little bit of pepper. About a half a teaspoon. You don't need a lot of pepper. Unless you want it kind of spicy. I'm going to use about a teaspoon of onion powder. 
And what you're doing is just basically layering on the spices so that you don't have to use a lot of salt and you're getting your flavor. And we're going to use about a teaspoon of dried oregano. Now, before we mix all this up, we're going to add in our chopped onions. And we took our bell peppers, and since I'm only doing two pounds, I had a half of a red one and a half of an orange one. And then we're putting in a half of a purple onion. I just think purple onions give it a little better flavor because they're kind of sweet. Okay, and we're just going to mix all of that around together. Okay, now you're going to add in your egg. Just one egg. Eggs help the meat to bind. If you don't want to use eggs, you do not have to. You can use just the egg whites. You can use a little flaxseed. Um, you know, those are things that help bind. You just put a little flaxseed in some water and it'll turn into like a fake egg. So that, so that you can just have that liquid. And if you don't want to use any liquid at all, you don't have to. You can use a little milk. You can use some almond milk. There's a lot of things you could do. Now we're going to take some chopped parsley and chopped arugula, just a little pinch off the bunch, and put those in there. And mix those around. And we have breadcrumbs that we're going to use, but we're not going to use our breadcrumbs until after we put our, our red sauce in. So, now, we got all that mixed together, so we're going to let that sit until the sauce is ready. And then we're going to add some sauce and finish up. Okay, so now we're going to finish up our sauce for the meatloaf. We've already taken the water and poured it out of this pot. So now we have our steamed tomatoes that we're putting in. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. And then you're going to take a fork. It doesn't have to be a fancy fork, just a regular one. You can even use a spoon, a slotted spoon, and you're just going to mash those tomatoes down in there as much as you can. Because it's going to turn to sauce in a minute. I have my fire on medium to keep it warm as I'm building. You're mashing those potatoes and you're mashing the arugula and the parsley up in with it. Remember you added a little bit of seasoning in there so you don't have to really add much. We're going to put in about a quarter cup of salsa. You can use homemade salsa. I make homemade salsa all the time. But you can also use store box. And all it is is just giving it a little extra kind of flavor that you normally wouldn't have. And I promise you, you're going to like it. We're going to take one little half teaspoon of honey mustard. Just a little half teaspoon of honey mustard. And stir that around in there. That just gives it that little sweetness that smooths it out. And then you're going to use a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar helps to cut down on the acidity in tomatoes so you don't get heartburn because you used a lot of tomatoes to make the sauce. Okay, now if you can bear with me for a second. There we go. And see, that's what the sauce looks like. We're going to let it simmer for about three minutes so it can all the flavors can marry each other and then we're going to add it to our meatloaf okay so now that our tomato sauce our sauce is done um as you can see i put on some gloves because the sauce is hot <laughs> so you don't want to burn yourself so take precautions or you can let it cool all the way down if you have time we're just going to take half of it and put it into the meat because the other half we're going to spread over top. Okay, and then you're just going to fold it in with everything else. And then we're going to take our breadcrumbs and put those in. And this is roughly about a cup of breadcrumbs. There we go. And you notice how in ground chicken is that it doesn't create a whole lot of oil 
so it's not as greasy as uh, the ground beef. And so, with it being, you know, so lean, it doesn't create all that grease, so you don't have to drain everything so much as, as much off. Okay, so now, got everything together. I'm gonna put them in a pan. I'm gonna show you how to build it. And then we're gonna put it in the oven. I have my oven preheated to 375. And then we're gonna cook it in the oven roughly about 30 minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna half the meat in two separate loaves, but in the same pan. So, and if you like, you can actually spray the bottom of your pan with some non-cooked spray. I prefer to use glass pans because it doesn't really stick and so I'm not gonna do that so I'm gonna take one loaf first and put it on one side and then the other side the other half and put it on the other side so you actually have like two loaves here and I'm not putting it in one big loaf because I want it to cook all the way through and not take forever. And then you just form the loaf with your hand. You could use a loaf pan, that's wonderful, but it's all about preference. So, and then you just form the loaf in the pan and you see we have two separate loaves here. Now, what you're gonna do is take your sauce now and cover it cover the meatloaf with the sauce, both sides. Now the trick to meatloaf guys, and getting it not to be soggy, is when it finishes cooking, the faster you get it out of the pan and rest it on the plate, the better. Because when you leave it in the pan to rest, it soaks all those juices and those uh, oils and stuff back up into the meat which is what causes it to get soggy okay so now we're ready to go into the oven so we're going to put this in the oven 375 roughly about 30 minutes we're going to go back in and check it and we should be about done taking the um meatloaf out of the oven we're gonna immediately remove it from the pan and set it on a plate and let it rest for roughly about 10 to 15 minutes. Alrighty, my darlings, there you have it. We have made us a wonderful ground chicken and ground turkey meatloaf. It's absolutely delicious. We even made our own sauce to go with it so we didn't have to use ketchup or tomato sauce or anything like that. We made our own. It's really, really good. Now, a couple of things. Well, one thing mainly to remember. When you are making your meatloaf, you can buy, you know, the um, breadcrumbs. You can buy whole wheat or bread, breadcrumbs. You can use breadcrumbs that, you know, you toast the, toast the bread and make it yourself to help it to bind. You can do that, or you can not use breadcrumbs at all. That's just a preference for me. So also, when you're making meatloaf, the way that you keep the meatloaf from being soggy is as soon as you possibly can, take it out of that pan and set it on a plate or on a platter and let it rest for about 10 minutes. And then if you do that, that way you can cut it, it stays nice and firm, it's still moist and delicious and good. Because if you leave it in the pan, what happens is all of those juices that flow out of it or that uh, formed in the bottom of the pan when you were cooking it, start to soak right back up into it. And then as it's soaking back up into it, it makes it nice and soggy. And who wants soggy meatloaf? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video I really really pray that you enjoyed this recipe if you did go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can keep coming back and then get those notifications whenever we upload videos and things like that I promise you I'm gonna try my best not to ever be gone that long again I told everybody gotta stay healthy because <laughs> I don't I can't I have to be back to doing what I love to do <laughs> although 
I didn't enjoy it when my mom was visiting. <laughs> so, but I'm gonna try my best not to stay gone that long again. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and guess what? Share this video. Share this video with somebody that just may want to check out some new recipes or check out new ways to do things. And so it's all good. We love family. You know, we like welcoming them all in. And if you like, you can follow me on social media. I am on Facebook as well as Instagram. Just look for Love Mom or Love Mom 2930 and you'll find me right there with the food and everything. All of that. <laughs> now here pretty soon we have some announcements and some things coming up. I'm not going to tell them to you right now, but stay tuned and you will know soon enough. I thank you so very much for sticking with me. Thank you all for your prayers. When, it, when my mom got sick, thank you for all the well wishes. And trust me, she's doing wonderful now. I thank you so much for allowing me into your life a few minutes at a time a day. And I love you, love you, love you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. And happy cooking.